Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Something weird should be better now. Matt can't make it. I didn't hear from Alita. And I might also get pulled into a thing which has been Looks keeping like me. there is uh, no agenda. So uh, let's create one ad hoc, but I don't think there is any major topic. There's one topic, but that's more an FYI. Yep. Um, but you also know the FYI. You can also, <laughs> or I can do it. <laughs> this fine. Okay, I'll just do it while you type. Uh, so a, uh, everyone in this call, please feel invited to put yourselves onto the agenda, which oh, Bart again did perfect. Also, we follow the CNCF code of conduct, which I don't think will be a problem in this, in this crew, uh, but still uh, for the record, we take it seriously. Um, so the one FYI info point, um, Arthur uh, decided to step down from uh, from uh, chaperoning the uh, white paper. Uh, of course, he just doesn't have time, and and that has been ongoing um, for for some time. Bartik and I talked if uh, maybe the two of us can can just adopt it and try and push it over the finish line. Um, so we can just fully release it and not have have pre versions, which also means we then can finalize the translation into into Chinese and chats uh, and such, and and just uh, close that point. Um, beyond this, we had KubeCon. Um, everyone was in a blind panic, I assume, uh, <laughs> similar to me or to. <laughs> to probably most in this call, um, they didn't like nothing much happened at least on on my end. Of course, it was either preparation for KubeCon or it was it was the the normal blind panic of KubeCon. I think we have a few new people, um, so all of them are more than welcome to say hi. Uh, but also, I'm really bad with names and faces, so maybe maybe we don't have new people. Um, <laughs> uh, if you're new, um, please say hi, who you are, what you do, um, why you're interested here in this crowd here. You know what I mean. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Shar Cruden. I'm with New Relic. I'm taking on some new work um, with Foundation Open Source. And so I'm just trying to kind of understand the lay of the land. So just out here, seeing what everybody is up to and figuring out how I can best uh, support the groups that exist and help make sure New Relic is aware of what's going on. Nice. Nice, yeah, welcome. Um, you'll hopefully find stuff which is interesting. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's been a fun couple of weeks as I'm starting to get into it, for sure. Nice. Anyone else? Hello. Um, I'm Mike. I'm an SRE at uh, Noble9. Previously led observability over at uh, like a real estate company called Redfin. And I just generally have a passion for the Ollie space. So mostly here to be a fly on the wall and keep uh, keep in tune with what's what's coming. Okay, nice. Uh, I Noble9 is an end user, correct? It's uh, like an SLO platform, sort of a, an okay. aggregate uh, collector for various Ollie telemetry into SLO friendly data styles. Okay, okay. Reason I'm asking is we are always trying to find uh, new new end users to to basically ask all the questions. Uh, that's a little bit of a problem we have. Of course, we are more or less an echo chamber, like not completely, but tend to be one. Uh, where historically uh, CNCF projects have mainly taken an interest in this group. Um, it's it's starting that vendors are coming in, which is great to see. 
um, end users not so much, and we are really trying to break that ice and and allow end users to join. Um, basically, encourage them to join to speak up to actually tell us what what they would like to be seeing. Because um, if we do everything in a vacuum, yeah, kind of obvious. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, just real quick. I'm not new, but I'm back uh, before at Elastic, uh, Dynatrace, now at Elastic. Um, now responsible for observability, unified observability there. And uh, yeah, it looks as if I have more time now uh, than I had at uh, Dynatrace because my scope is now a little bit more narrow. So I'm looking forward to trying more often. <laughs> It takes time for responsibility to build up, I guess. Yeah, welcome oh, back, I guess. <laughs> I might as well reintroduce myself also. I'm Ian. I'm also uh, SRE at uh, Noble9 and also work on the Open SLO project, uh, which we presented here a little while back. But I just wanted to. I haven't, I haven't been as frequent of a, a visitor as I should have been. So I just want to say hi. Welcome. Hey, hello. Also me, Doge John. Uh, I'm from AWS Lambda Telemetry, and this is the second time I'm attending. I also made a big break before that. So I would like to follow what's happening in observability and discuss with you folks and try to bring some ideas to the Lambda environment also. So that's my goal to be in here. Okay. Nice. Just good, good. I mean again we have this KubeCon slump which uh, alongside the summer slump are those two common things where we don't have a lot of stuff going on so we can also just end early or if anyone has anything they want to bring up discuss propose talk about sing about dance about um now is the time i'd actually be interested in um continuing your thought around how we can get more end users in there um you know participating in in our tech um like I'm not aware of any uh, issue that we have created or tracking or any any write up. Like I'm thinking almost like a program, an outreach program, something that we actively do rather than just you know hoping for the best. <laughs> because I agree, we really need much much more participation from from end users. Um, any thoughts on on that? Do we have any? So from uh, the formal part of the tag, um, in all the usual communication, like, uh, for example, coupon last uh, week and such, um, we, um, we always reach out and, and basically tell anyone who listens that they should please uh, attend. Um, a thing which has not yet happened is um, to go into the uh, webinar streams and, and, and blog streams of CNCF. Um, I poked them quite some time ago. I didn't yet hear about when uh, when anything is opening up. I can take an action item on poking again. Maybe it got dropped. Maybe maybe we are at some place in the schedule. I just don't know. Also, someone has strong background noise or talking. If they can mute themselves, please. Ah, thank you. Perfect. Um, yeah. The so webinar so sounds really point. great. I think webinar makes a lot of sense if if um, if you're looking for contributions there. I'm more than happy to contribute a little bit. Um, I think it would be great if if it's not just you know nothing against you, Richie, but not just one person or one face, but like having maybe different people saying you know having a, a short contribution, a minute or or less, saying something, um, saying like you know why why it's important um, to. For, for end users to try. Yeah, uh, you mean like faces of, of the tag or some such? Yeah. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, no, um, absolutely. I mean, again, the, the main thing we are waiting on is uh, is for CNCF to tell us what slot we have. And, and once we know that we can, we can uh, 
start filling it with content, the underlying assumption was always that we would have the white paper finished before that time. Um, that again um, will hopefully happen soon. Um, and then, then we also have that in place. But again, I'll take an action item to to poke uh, to poke CNCF. Poke about what again? Like face of the tech is like a session or interview sessions or webinar. Uh, webinar. The tech, not... Yeah. The, the techs, uh, similar to graduated projects, uh, get um, some form of access to webinars and and CNCF blog. Right, right, but um, this is like it's highly like, content. Mm -hmm. But this is looks like the content from our side. But like, uh, looks like we want information. We want input data from from the end users to to our space, right? So I wonder if there is any any kind of idea of uh, maybe interviewing end users or like having like ten minutes of like yeah, someone who are willing to just walk through the observability problems they are having right now with current. Um, usage of open source tools, right? And and just uh, maybe, or, you know, the survey or any kind of form of, um, you know, input they can give us. I wonder if, yeah, anything on this direction is useful. I, I don't think that it's mutually exclusive, so we can yeah, do both, yeah. but it, like my thinking was in terms of the webinar, if for example, yourself or, or Richie say like, you know, here, by the way, we have this white paper and then a couple of people uh, volunteering from, from the tag saying like, why do we think it's important that we know <laughs> if, if all of, of us, the majority being vendors saying like, hey, you know, we'd really appreciate if you if you would join us as, as an end user um, to kind of like almost like a recruiting <laughs> event to, to use that. And, uh, you know, the webinars are pretty, pretty well, you know, uh, advertised. And, and I think that makes a nice scalable way to recruit or, or motivate well, people yeah yeah we have um you know um the kubecon talk right like we could also add it there <laughs> do we, we know have... why do we know why uh end users should join us what is our pitch why do what i'm an end user that's Tell me. Th that's part of the problem we are having so um usually end users tend to consider what we are doing as infrastructure. It needs to come out of the wall and largely just work unless they are at that intersection that they have a little bit of a personal interest in this area and also happen to work, uh, work at, at an end user. It's, this is a self-selecting crowd. We chose to work at companies which are supporting work, which is in this area. Kind of tautologic, but it, it is what it is. So we have we have this inherent problem of, of end users, usually unless they are in a specific project to, to do X, not really getting too much value out of, out of joining these kinds of things. So it's a lot more, in my opinion, about, about permeating the wider ecosystem with a hey here is a place where you can come with your concerns with your thoughts with your whatever um, and get whatever drive by contributions we will be getting but we should not be kidding ourselves that we will have huge amounts of end users which always join and give a ton of input input because if they are most likely at some point they will be working at a vendor or they will be working within a project or both. Of course, again, the self-selection is happening, then they are building connections with people who work in those areas, like us. And if they really care about this, at some point they'll start working at some of them, of course, if they get offers like you no know, tomorrow. So it's it's about making certain that end users are aware that this exists. But speaking as or with my Prometheus hat on, uh, getting feedback from end users is extremely hard, even if CNCF actively and aggressively pushes questionnaires, content, what have you, towards end users. Um, getting actual feedback and such is, is hard. That doesn't mean we should be stopping, um, but also we shouldn't be expecting to have tens of thousands of end users join this, the next call. I coming back to to the, the question that Daniel has, like you know, let me give you a pitch in the sense of why would you join at least for once? Um, 
you you have two kinds of of issues, right? You have on the one hand, you have concrete issues like I want to you know do this kind of monitoring or whatever. What would you uh, recommend me to use or whatever, right? And if you're talking with ten vendors, you probably get eleven different answers or whatever. But that's the kind of thing, right? So here, what we can do is we can. Uh, recommend best practices or good practices because like, well at the current point in time you should really be i don't know um instrumenting and emitting something i don't know uh, using open metrics for example on the other hand um there are more like aspirational visionary things right where end users might not necessarily have a strong opinion but we as vendors do but we also want feedback in terms of prioritization i guess right at the end of the day we you know want to give feedback for PMs or whatever, where we say, well, this feature versus that feature should be early implemented or whatever. But that's more like the you know visionary aspirational part. But I would definitely, and what, what Richie said in the beginning, right, this, this echo chamber, right? If we just tell each other, it's like, oh, this is so important. And the reality out there is people are somewhere totally different, right? <laughs> it's a bit like it reminds me of the the scheduler wars where you know it was messes against Kubernetes. Who has the better scheduling algorithm? And people were like, "Well, that's not really my problem. My problem is somewhere totally different." <laughs> and we vendors were absolutely in a different, like mentally in a different place, right? And and that's the kind of like avoiding this this echo chamber is is a, a super important part of, of my motivation at least. Is is there? like a common uh, path for end users to find that best practice sort of recommendation set. I know like even a few months ago when I was doing observability work at Redfin, like I, I did eventually stumble into the um, CNCF Slack to ask very specific questions about Hotel. But I would say a majority of the best practice guidance I received was from other Slacks, uh, like the observability monitoring Slack uh, that's tied to like various newsletters. Is there kind of a path that we should be recommending folks to go on to find that best practice documentation? Or is there even a collection of that so far? Or is it something that we just want people to only land here to get? The white paper is right. probably a, a pretty good starting point, right? The white paper is kind yeah. of like an umbrella. Mm -hmm. um, overall. That's why this is one of the of the earlier things, even though it's been quite long running for uh, by now, because um, this gives you the basis of what is all of this about. And building on top of this, you can start uh, recommending actual things. Part of of the complete truth is probably that there will never be one single thing. So it's probably more about, about uh, showcasing things which worked, not about telling every single end user that one thing is going to be the best ever. Um, we still have the problem of the kind of user who, who wants to have that engagement is already finding a path into this community in some form. So they're not strongly dependent on, on, on this, uh, group, for example. Again, we, we shouldn't stop trying and we shouldn't like we can make that pitch that they can actually shape the thing and they can influence the thing. Um, the problem is if they just want to open the tap in in the wall and it comes out of the wall. Um, don't care about shaping it. Uh, they care about consuming it. There's another again, aspect no in reason terms of. Right in terms of peers, right? If you if you think about, like a vendor might tell you many things and you may or may not trust that vendor depending on your relationships or previous experience. But if you hear from a peer, like don't touch that or, oh, that was awesome. You probably are more inclined to at least give it a try. So we could be a basis to kind of like, not almost matchmaker, but say like, okay, look, here's the Slack channel. Like if you wanna learn from your, from your peers, from others who have gone through that, here's a place. And it doesn't have to be, this meeting, right? Slack channel, right? Why not using our Slack channel more prominently to bring end users together to exchange there or at least find each other? They can do that in private if they prefer to, but at least, you know, being this kind of place where people can meet and exchange their observability experiences and stories. And I think to, to something that Richie mentioned, there is going to be such a breadth of different strategies folks are going to consider adopting or or would really make sense to adopt right like to me it almost feels like a need for essentially like a knowledge base like a collection of recommendations rather than just this holistic 
I mean, I, I have no, I'm sorry, it's my first, definitely first meeting. So I'm very curious to kind of oh, see yeah. what this white paper sort of ends up being. But I feel like, yeah, like having small chunks of recommendations around different patterns or different workflows yeah. um, is something that I would look for if I were trying to improve observability around yeah. any individual type of tooling cool. or Type of I, I was just about to, to point out what, what Bartik shared, like the, the tag security um, did that or, oh yeah, that's ours. But the, the tag security did that, right? Uh, having a, a kind of knowledge base. I'm just a little bit worried if we time-wise don't even get the white paper out, then we should probably not attack an, an even more time intensive and, and longer lasting project. But I, I would definitely be interested in, um, you know, in, in contributing to that, if, if we if we have enough support from from folks on the call on the group, I think with I mean and I think with that, as if as we get that far, those types of conversations can be more. Um, I know they they can bring in a bit more interest from outside groups if if the you know the topic is going to be focused on this particular set of of observability that is distinct to your use case, um, rather than just being a generic conversation for all things Ollie. And at that point, there's also starting to be contention for content. Uh, of course, uh, with with my KubeCon hat, uh, KubeCon hat on, um, or the, the program committee thing, um, we really try hard to get a ton of, of case studies and user stories and such. Um, and it's not easy to get high quality and relevant ones. Um, and they're already being shoved and showcased into KubeCon. So um, a lot of this is drained from uh, from the rest of the ecosystem. Uh, of course, that's just uh, the, the highest value venue um, within, within um, that particular community, um, which again, only makes it harder. And I'm not trying to discourage anyone. I'm just like, those are the... As a as a rush onboarding uh, pressure feeding of 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 the problems we have in this in this area, yeah. But again, um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't like from from and what can we actually do point of view, for example, talk about hey come to this and treat it a little bit like an office hours, uh, and also we can extract things which which are problems for you from that office hour type thing. And maybe distill this into something uh, which which has more wide uh, use or or applicability. Those kinds of things, um, yeah. I mean, um, the, the people are out there, uh, real quick. Because I mean, I saw it in the past that also like customers were were approaching us from different groups within the customer and 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 asking us just for best practices despite the pro product. So there, there's a huge confusion out there anyways. Everything that is there now, trace context, open telemetry, uh, what is what, what can I use when? Uh, so I think that it's maybe just a matter of reach or like no, people don't know that we exist and don't know what they could expect from us. Think that this is a vendor group that just like, is more about like this echo chamber uh, that you you mentioned, Richie. So I think getting more words out there, maybe beyond CNCF, might be good. I guess because CNCF is also again like a very, I would say, closed uh, uh, group in some way. Not every S three is has to be like CNCF aware. Ish, I would say, like, if you look at the structure, CNCF is the lighthouse uh, foundation within the Linux foundation, and and a lot of the content and concepts of uh, CNCF and the projects established within CNCF tend to see a lot of reuse within the wider Linux foundation community. Um, as such, I would argue that CNCF has reached beyond just uh, cloud native. Um, but by yes, I agree that uh, that that it won't like it won't have global reach. But at that point, also at some point, we need to be a realistic because if we talk as CNCF tech observability, someone who has honest zero interest in CNCF uh, is unlikely to join anything called CNCF tech observability. 
um, I mean, if they join and if they get input, uh, great. Um, I've literally talked to people running ports and and power plants and windmills and such with Prometheus. Um, so yes, you can absolutely um, use those, but those will either already be going towards CNCF or they will not. They will not self-select to to come near CNCF, much less. Uh, the tag so outreach much beyond Linux Foundation circles is probably not going to be super effective, but if you want to do it, by all means, do it. Like again, uh, just trying to to focus where we where we put most work and effort, not uh, trying to discourage anyone from going as wide as you possibly can. Okay, can we sum up in some way or some where maybe in the talk or somewhere uh, some of the tools that we have uh, uh, by the CNCF? Mm -hmm. And so that we know that these are the possibilities and then we can still figure out if we can fill it and how. Those are the ones uh, summarized at the beginning. We have we have um, KubeCon talks uh, for the various tags. Um, we have some sort of access to, to blog and to, um, to webinars. And we have general coverage of PR stuff. So um, if the once we finish the white paper, for example, I can talk to the usual people in Linux Foundation slash CNCF PR and say, OK, hey, there's the thing. Can you amplify this through a press release or what have you? Those are the usual vehicles which we have. And we always try and sprinkle this, hey, please come to us, collaborate into all of those channels whenever we cover any of those. Those are the formalized right. things. Sorry for jumping around. Can I quickly get back to what Mike asked or, or suggested earlier on in terms of the, the knowledge base? Uh, seems a little bit reploying. It took me a little bit to, to find it, what, what I meant by what the, the tag security did. And if you think about it, we could do something in a, in a very focused uh, manner for, I don't know, let's say a uh, correlation of, of signals or whatever, like one particular place or one particular topic um, in depth um, but that would again require that we know what what are the biggest pain points that our wider audience, the, the end users, effectively really have, right? We if we just because we vendors think that correlation is the most important bit, right, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that eighty percent of the the end users out there uh, agree with that, right? Maybe it's it's something. Maybe it's instrumentation. Maybe it's something something else. But using this this link that I um that i i just shared on on the, the chat in, in zoom uh, it gives you an example where you know this tag the security tag did that for ve one very specific topic for for supply chains very much in depth and that was that came out of the the effective needs of, of end users as far as i know just as one example in contrast to a, a kind of like general purpose knowledge base which um yeah might have other challenges Exactly, Bartek. That's the point. Yeah. What What is the the the, the answers are not that part the, the big of a problem, right? We get many many answers. What What are the, the actual frequently asked questions? Exactly. Um, on that topic, uh, I had an idea. What if there was like a question box on that sort of FAQ that people didn't have to log into, and then you only asked between like general and then medium general i guess questions and then like you post them there like for the faq and then they say okay well like that one's a third of what i need and that other one's a third i need i guess i'll just join the slack and get the last third we have tried something like this within cncf for prometheus and it was a sounding failure uh people didn't really send much and if they did it we didn't really know what they meant because they didn't have the the words to express what their actual problems and intentions were and it ended up being frustrating for us and i presume also for the others my gut would be more to try and steer them towards some sort of interactive channel where we can follow up and also welcome them and not just have a black box where you type in and it goes away and maybe you get something out of it in a month um like contact me about that problem i have so if we maybe couple it to an email address which they can put in or something that might work 
if it's just drop the question and and go historically we had bad experience for i think pretty much everyone involved ah okay i guess in in lieu uh, of uh but not to just shut it down uh we we literally had that idea and we explored it so it's not a bad idea we just found it's it didn't work in practice in lieu of kind of the challenges of crowdsourcing the right topics, it does look like the existing white paper references research has already been done by existing vendors. Is that a path we could follow where it's not necessarily, you know, it's going to be a, a bit biased because it's going to be research that was done by an existing vendor, but it might give some um, insight, some existing data to sort of launch off of to say like we know these somebody at least at some point told some people that these were some topics that they didn't really understand yet in Ollie or that they needed some help with. Um, so that could be a good guidance for yeah, just areas where folks can get more answers. Again, all, all after the white paper is published for sure. One point, and maybe also going back to what uh, Lucas said, um, if we have someone who wants to own any of this and to just drive it, by all means, uh, we, we have the space, we have the agenda, we have the authority for the tech to just do it and see what happens. Um, so it's, of course, I realized this in particular course, we have so many new joiners. This is not me trying to shut anything down. This is me trying to focus effort. But if someone wants to do something, um, we can just open a work stream and, and say, OK, let's explore this. Let's try and collate existing material. Let's try and collate uh, questions for an FAQ from, from whatever angle, from whatever avenue. So by all means, if we have someone who, who wants to own it and to drive it, we can just experiment with it. Worst thing, uh, we find it doesn't work. And in a few months, we, we stop doing it. Best thing, we find it's totally awesome um, and, and keep doing it. Gotcha. I'll try and think of a clever way to get them to join the Slack. Okay, so it looks like yeah, there's one question if we have metrics from QCon. There are uh, metrics within CNCF for the various conferences and talks and such, but I don't think they are public beyond what is in the in the transparency thing. Uh, I can ask if, like, it's something which CNCF considers business, having business value, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. Um, it's not something which I which I ever saw published, like a ranking of different talks or so. This is not something which which they make public. Um, I would love to have it, because <laughs> it would be super useful in 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 guiding where to go with content. Keep going observability after all, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just uh, so it looks like this this topic kind of uh, you know uh, got finished. Uh, I want to just give a reminder that please read through the current state of observability white paper, um, still in the same PR, uh, because since we are picking this up, uh, there is like amazing chance to bring uh, your suggestions and which will be applied soon. Right. So uh, please do it. Cool. Anything else? Yeah, just really quick on the on the end user thing. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that we do at, at Noble Nine is we do talk to end users a lot. I mean, that's where we kind of sit, where you sit with people that are using these these tools. That, um, we, it, some of the stuff that you're asking for for to like help you know steer some people to, to this um, 
group is that you know, would it be beneficial for us to mention like when we're talking to customers that are maybe struggling or want more uh, experience or more help with observability to push them to this the, you know the, the slack channel to the meeting and everything looks like richie you're saying yeah by all means um okay. any any chance you get to steer people towards this group if they want to join they're more than welcome to okay. everyone anyone um if it if it comes up in a context where you think it's helpful absolutely like okay yeah, yeah. Because I will say that we, we do inter, uh, engage with uh, organizations of all level of maturity, and this that sort of thing has come up in the past. And so I think moving forward, when we talk to them and engage with them, yeah, we'll see about using this as a resource for them. I was going to say a good uh, good question in terms of consumable resources beyond the white paper potentially. I, I would also always qualify essentially saying like, look, you know, if you are, you know, some people are more like, give me concrete advice concerning like, how do I implement SLIs or whatever, right? Yeah, give me the tooling. Um, others might have uh, like actually looking for, you know, experiences from others or whatever. So saying like, look, if you're, if you actually want to see others and talk in real time there are the meetings or slack right and and you know there's the mailing list and you can create a, a github issue for for more asynchronous um communication or whatever so um yeah if folks did have questions more about the implementation side of things um is the slack the wrong place to ask communities tend yeah, to no. tend to go where they want um it's it's usually a question of where you find people who who you find pleasant enough to work with and then either you stick around or you don't and then you grow something new um arguably cncf has has too many not too few uh ways of interaction and in particular of consumption but from from the theory of community angle um it's pretty hard to steer this unless you put deliberate effort into a specific place which you then support with with your energy because that is one of the very few things which which you can use to actually steer um where those communities grow except like beyond this it's mostly pumpkins you can plant the seed, but where the actual fruit grows is is non-deterministic, and you have no chance of figuring this out in advance. Um, if you stick around and if you're being helpful and nice to people, they will also stick around. They will hopefully also be nice to people, and and you grow something there. So it's much more about having engagement in a place, and it will grow. Not so much about us deciding, okay, we want to have this one Slack channel or IRC or what have you? Okay. We seem to be at an end normally we even start 10 minutes before the hour but uh, we usually run over this time we seem to be running under uh, so unless anyone has anything else everyone gets 10 minutes of their day back great okay thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. bye bye